Hold on, y'all. Hey, what's up, everybody? I got some weird stuff going on in my headphones right now. Sorry, I still got my music playing. <laughs> Welcome into the show, y'all. This is a glitch in the matrix where everything gets glitchy the minute I hit that live button. It gets glitchy, y'all, and uh, and that's one of my it's one of my mo's here. It a glitch in the matrix. If it's not glitchy, it ain't right. Okay, <laughs> so. Thank everybody for being here today. I have a, a wonderful show for us today. We're going to be talking about hyena dogmen and the hyenas of the Appalachian Mountains. Okay, and uh, this is going to be a fantastic show. I cannot wait to bring my guests up today. I have Mr. E here of the Cryptids of the Corn podcast, and uh, he is a wealth of knowledge and has done uh, a lot of research on this. And so we've got a lot to talk about. Okay. So if you guys would like to follow all my shows and, uh, you know, I'm a host at spaced out radio every uh, Saturday and Sunday night. And I also have two shows here live every week, every Wednesday and Thursday, uh, go to my website. That's the cryptid where you can find all of my shows, all the events that I'm going to be speaking at and, uh, and you name it, whatever else we got going on. It's going to be there on my website. Okay. Also, uh, if you'd like to support what I do, I have a Patreon. That's the Cryptid Huntress over on Patreon. Uh, and shout out to all my Patreon members. I love you guys. Thank you so much for all your support. Uh, and also, I do have a shop. That's on Etsy. And it's called War Woman Goods. And shout out to everybody who has supported me through my Etsy shop. I do appreciate that very much. Y'all rock big time. Okay. Well, I figured let's just get to the show today because we have uh, so much to talk about. And uh, we get just like last week. I know we went almost two hours last week and uh, and it was well worth it. We can totally do that again today. But we're going to we're going to um, we're going to try to uh, not go two hours today. But we'll see because this is going to be a great show. OK, so um, I'm going to give Mr. E a formal introduction today. Cryptos of the Corn are a couple of buddies with a shared interest in the cryptozoological, paranormal, and the plain strange. They focus on the Midwest and the Appalachia regions of the U.S. and venture out of those borders. They cover big cryptids, one-off cryptids, some big questions on the subjects of the strange, interviews with eyewitnesses, and a little bit of a science lesson. And that's what I love about them because they're into the woo side like me. And they're also very scientific about it. So please help me welcome to the show today, A Glitch in the Matrix, Mr. E of Cryptids of the Corn podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, thank you for be being here today and for joining me. I just love talking with you because you are just so knowledgeable in all this stuff and you have the same interests as I do. So I figured we'd talk about it today. Some of these Appalachian monsters. That's perfect. <laughs> And we talked about so much already in the last 10 minutes, 20 minutes beforehand off stage. It's, it's just how it I works. I feel like we just had a full show. <laughs> I know we already had a show before the show. We should have been recording that actually. That would have been awesome. That could have been a whole other show. That's my problem. Uh, yeah. Like you yeah, said, well, oops, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm the great. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. The moniker. Uh, no. So. And like uh, Jay's not here. He's he's in the middle of his like six vacations he takes in the middle of summer. He literally gets back from one and leaves and gets back from one and leaves. Uh, but yeah, so like, you know, you find a podcast anywhere you find uh, your guys' stuff. We're on YouTube. Our first documentary comes out August 18th, 8 p.m. is the premiere date on YouTube. Sorry, really bad internet, I guess. 
Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Duke. Um, what was I saying? I get thrown off everywhere. Yeah, we do all kinds of crazy fun stuff. Uh, we have events coming up. If you don't mind me shouting those out, you can meet okay. us or hear us speak. Uh, we have this weekend, this weekend, uh, the Hocking Hills Bigfoot Festival. We're not speakers at this one, uh, but we're hanging out. It's going to be a great one. They did like 11,000 people a day last year. It's a two day event. It's crazy. Oh, it's wow. awesome. Logan, Ohio is where that's at. Uh, literally, it's the, probably one of the big footiest Bigfoot places in Ohio. The Walmart is painted in Bigfoots inside and out. So that tells you anything about the people in the area. They're real into it. Uh, and then later on, we're speakers at Squonka Palooza, and that is nice. August 26th. And that is Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Uh, I think that's it for this month. And then we have, yeah, then we have others. But you get all that on our website and all that fun stuff. But yeah, no, thank you for having us or having me. Well, of course. I, I had to have you on today because I had been watching some of your uh, some of your podcasts, okay, and can't get enough of them. And I noticed that you, okay, there was one that really caught my attention, and that was about the hyenas uh, of North America and in the Appalachians, okay. And I had done my research and had get, been given a, a target for remote viewing a while back of the, let's just say the beasts of LBL. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. in Kentucky in the Appalachian mountains out there. And, uh, and this, whatever I was seeing that was attacking this family, it looked like a hyena man, kind of like a, a hyena man, like a dog man type of a thing. And, uh, and I've also done some research and did, um, a show on the beast of Javudan out in France. Okay. And these hyenas keep coming up in my, in my research and in my data and things that I'm, I'm, doing shows on too and i thought it was really interesting that we would have hyenas or even a hyena dog man here in the united states <laughs> okay because they're oh, not yeah. uh regional right or are they bum, bum, or bum. are they so yeah like you said this actually this episode we did was uh brought to us kind of we get some really cool listener like submissions so this one listener named sean super cool dude he submitted his small, like he had a brief encounter with a hyena in Lexington, Kentucky. And he was like, pretty much, I'm going to like paraphrase it, but he was at like a traffic stop and he looked over and that was a hyena. And everybody I'm sure here knows and everybody listening at home knows a hyena is a very distinct looking animal. Uh, their posture is much more similar to a bear than any a dog or a feline uh, where their, their front legs are a lot longer than their back legs. So they have that higher shoulder look. They have the big ridge on the neck and the back and they have almost their faces. When you really look at a hyena's face, you can tell that they're not a dog or a cat. It almost looks monkey like they have that kind of humanish, like the scary looking face. Uh, so that's how they kind of got started. And then I did a deep dive and there's been tons of hyena sightings around Lexington and all throughout the Appalachians. But my t the two Kentucky. big hot spots we did. Yeah, Lexington, Kentucky. I'm sorry. And then the two big hotspots that yeah. popped up was Lexington and Detroit, Michigan. So there's tons Whoa, and tons of hyenas in Michigan and the Michigan dog, man. And uh, yeah, so yeah. these hyenas, there's spotted hyenas and there's brown hyenas. There's actually subspecies of both of those. Spotteds are smaller. Uh, the brown hyenas are bigger. Yeah, so there we go. There's subspecies. So that one in the top right, oh, let me see. Let me get it right for everybody home. Uh Okay, one's an ard wolf. One's a spotted hyena. Actually, these two top ones are both ard wolves. And the one with the a lot of the spots is a spotted hyena, and the other one's a, a digital image of a brown hyena. So ard wolves are actually related to hyenas, but they're harmless. They're <laughs> insect eaters. They actually eat termite mounds and get they get into termite mounds and eat that kind of stuff. Uh fun little fact, because this is how my brain works. Ard wolves are endangered. Because people in Africa are accidentally killing them, thinking they're hyenas, and they're oh, like completely. Wow. They look very similar; like they are cousins. They are related. Just another target yeah. can run. Yeah, but they are actually insectivores. So that's a cool subspecies. Like it's a cool thing that they look. They are the hyena family, but they are aardwolves. Uh, Scott says, "Oh, sorry." Wow. I'm, nice. because, uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, I, I, I get distracted. Everybody, it's easy. But another crazy thing with the Detroit, Michigan, it's okay. is or in the Michigan area, 
there's actually a flock of emu that have survived three winters now in Michigan and are breeding, and their flock is getting bigger. Emu, the Whoa. big bird, the big fluffy bird. The, uh, yeah, so like yeah. it looks like an ostrich. Yeah, they're same family, same order. It's the uh, Rhea morphiforms or something like that. Uh, so bad internet. Sorry, guys. The emus, basically, like five of them got out, like two males, three females, kind of deal. And now people are seeing like up to flocks of like twenty-five of them in certain parts of Michigan. But we're here for hyenas. That's just how my brain works. So we did <laughs> so start diving in, and. It was like in the year 2004, there was a bunch of hyenas seen in uh, Lexington, Kentucky, and all through Appalachia. Um, I believe it was even, oh, what was the show? Like uh, like Paranormal Caught on Camera or something like that, or had an actual mm -hmm. video of a hyena crossing a street, and they're like, well, what's this animal? Uh, yeah. So that's that basic intro. Where did you want me to go from there? Wow. Okay. Well, I mean... I don't know. I, I just wanted to know. Okay, how how did they actually get here? Okay. Okay. Um. That that's kind of like to start off. Like, how did they get? Here? Were, were these okay? So were they native to this land and they've been decimated, or did they come from Africa? Like, did somebody bring them here? Yeah. Okay. And I guess that was kind of like my first question. <laughs> but, so if you're okay with it, we'll get into hyena biology a little bit before we answer that one. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, Let's do that. People don't realize how big hyenas are because in Africa, on these documentaries and all that stuff, you see them next to big animals like lions and wildebeest and all that kind of stuff. You know, we're talking animals that are 500 pounds, 2,000 pounds. So you look at the hyena as small. And uh, Scott, I'm actually, I'm from Northwest Ohio, real close to the border. So that is a spotted hyena. That is the smaller of the, the two species. And that is not a big spotted hyena that you're seeing on screen right now. Uh, they get a lot bigger than that. So spotted hyenas get very large. So the adult measures anywhere from uh, 65 inches in body length. They have a shoulder height of up to three and a half feet tall at the shoulder. So those are African. That's a small spotted hyena fighting with African painted dogs. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Where was my weight? So on average, they can weigh between 120 to 150 pounds. Uh, there are adults being measured of the... Well, let me get to it. Sorry, where was I at? My notes. Uh, some spot, so some brown hyenas in Zambia have weighed up to 200 pounds, and some of the extinct Eurasian population of hyenas, we have their remains. They're not fossilized remains; they're bone remains, uh, and they weighed over 250 pounds. So it seems the more north these hyena populations went, the bigger they got. Uh, so hyenas are awesome animals because they are super adaptable. They are found in every environment that they're able to get into. And most of the time, you, everybody at home probably thinks when you think of hyena, you think of like the Sahari, you think of the savanna, you think of like big Africa. It's, it is where they're at right now, but that's not where they were at in the last few thousand years. Uh, they actually love grasslands, woodlands, forests, rainforests, sub-deserts, even mountains up to 4,000 meters. Uh, hyenas oh. are great at handling the cold. They actually love it. Uh, really? And, yeah, oh, yeah. They love the cold. Uh, they're actually pretty, they're, they're very adaptable. And like we talked about off air is that hyenas are not canids. They're not, they're not dogs and they're not cats. They actually stepped off at the same branch before both of those animals. So they're their own subset of animals. Uh, most people see them and think they're a dog and stuff like that. They're not. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so they live up on the mountains. They do like, they do enjoy some cold. Now, how they got here is a, uh, oh, uh, before I move on to that, the behavioral patterns of hyenas. So everybody's seen the hyenas and yeah, they sound like human laughs. They sound, they make all kinds of other noise besides the laugh, but that's what they get, you know, they're famous for. Uh, in large groups, hyenas are very bold, outspoken, loud, boisterous predators, uh, most of the time scavengers. They're happily scavengers. They're very able to kill their own prey, but when there is like lions and hyena or lions and leopards and other big predators around those lions don't eat the whole carcass, mm -hmm. you know? So there's a lot of extra food that you don't have to work for around. So that is the group of hyenas. And that's how their behavior is. They're much more like they pick on, they try to run off other predators. 
Now, there's an interesting phenomena that occurs when a, a single hyena or a pair of hyenas is separated and they're alone. They become much more cat-like. By that, I mean they become much more reclusive. They don't make the loud noises. They're not these active predators. You don't see them during the day. They become much, much more like big cats. So that's kind of that wow. both you know, the big packed hyenas act more like dogs, and these pairs or single hyenas act much more like cats to where some of their their extent range or their their fringe ranges in Africa into the in the Middle East and even a little bit into Europe, uh, they don't know they're there. Like they're super hard to research, like big cats. When you go into Central Africa and stuff like that, it's, it, hyenas are one of the easiest animals to find. Wow, they're loud, boisterous, and making all this noise. They're not, you know, they're not shy. They're completely opposite when they're singled or just paired. So they can be wow. in an environment. And they're not dumb. Like, they're very smart animals. They are fully understand that people are not worth the time most of the time. By that, I mean, yeah. you know, attacking a human probably is not in their best interest unless they're very hungry or, you know, it's the, like uh, if you see in Africa, there's actually videos of these women, wild hyenas. These are not pet hyenas. Wild hyenas by this watering hole. And these women are walking down to get water right next to these hyenas and going back up and walking down and going to get water and walking right back up. And it's because the hyenas have learned generationally that if they start attacking people, they're all going to get shot. It's just not worth yeah, it, you know. Weapons. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, they, it's a defense mechanism, being quiet. And, and, you know, it's just like humans. When you're in a big pack, they're going to talk crap and, and heckle people. But when they're by themselves and they're face to face with somebody, they don't really speak up. Most of them. Most of them don't. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So and then I, the ask me how I know. <laughs> So, and thank you, Long Island Bigfoot, for that super sticker. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. Okay. Thank you for that super sticker, Mike. I appreciate that. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Mr. So, e. <laughs> uh, I, I, how did hyenas get to North America? Uh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I <laughs> nice comment. Yeah, you are. Uh, You're a rock star in the genre. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, how did hyenas get to North America? Well, believe it or not, uh, hyenas can be owned as pets. And I used to breed all kinds of exotic animals. There's, uh, you know, it depends on which state you're in for exotic animal laws. Ohio has very strict ones. Michigan and uh, Michigan is like a medium state, and Indiana is like a state that has none. Like pretty much, I've been to reptile shows and they had like five foot alligators laying on the table for sale. And then in Ohio, like you would be in jail, you would be in prison. So currently, in this, uh, oh, I'm not no. a legal expert. They're you terrible own, pets, anyways. Just what? saying what <laughs> alligators and stuff i'm oh, just saying they're not okay. good pets anyways right you should I mean, be not for me at least i think if you can afford like that's what the permanent's for in my opinion because that's it's a it's a big price tag <laughs> because it shows you can actually care for that animal because people don't really you know alligator gets 18 foot long and they eat hundreds of pounds of food uh but yeah so hyenas can legally be owned uh according to the uh i believe this was u.s wildlife in Alabama, Arkansas, Nevada, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Wisconsin. Uh, and kind of the weird thing is right now, a lot of those states at a lot of the, a lot of states just got taken off that list the last like five to 10 years. Uh, those are states that have high hyena sightings. Uh, Texas has a lot of hyenas. Alabama, has of hyenas. Alabama has a lot of hyenas. Uh, pretty much all of Appalachia. And then some of the northern Midwest has hyenas. And they were recently pets there. So, like I said, hyenas are very smart. They two have escaped from the Detroit Zoo, uh, and they—I believe they were recaptured. Or at least that's what the zoo said. Uh, so they are—they watch. They're—they're they're very. It's weird. They're like kind of like monkeys, kind of like you know dogs, kind of like cats, where they'll act real friendly like a dog, and then this—you know—the second the, they'll turn around and get you. Uh, so you can own those. So, but during the reign of Teddy Roosevelt, hyenas were a super common household pet in the entire U.S. They were taken, no. so they were, you know, this is this is the weird pet trade. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt's daughter had like a big python she kept in a purse and carried it around everywhere with her. Uh, but at this time in the U.S., we were taking all these animals from Africa. You could order them out of a magazine, hyena cubs, baby hyenas you could order out of a magazine, get them shipped here, and they were super common in the whole U.S. as pets including President Theodore Roosevelt owned a pet hyena his whole presidency. He kept it in the White House on a leash with him. Uh, his name was Bill. 
The what? highness name was Bill. Yeah. So they were so common, even the U.S. president had one as a pet on a leash. Uh, so there was this whole th- this wow. whole period, and then they'd get big, or they would they would uh, you know they'd try to bite you or whatever. You know, they're hyenas still. So people just release them. So we had the uh, one year uh, during I can't remember the actual year, but one year during Theodore Roosevelt's presidency, this one magazine had three thousand hyena cubs ordered from Africa. One magazine in one year, three thousand hyena cubs ordered for household pets. And just like alligators or whatever else, you know, they get a little big and they're like, okay, well, just go out in the woods. So there was a massive pet trade for them during the President Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt's uh, presidency. And the, as we've already established, they can hyper, they can survive in these climates super easy. Super easy. Uh, there are hyenas in the western part of Iraq also. Oh, yeah. They can get all the way. They used to be all the way up to uh, well, Russia. Uh, they were all through Eurasia uh, and eight in Asia itself. But that's not the only wow. These were actually native to the U.S. Uh, so there was, uh, let me get to it. Hyenas were survived the mega mammal extinction here in the U.S. So what's weird about that is that most animals that survived the megafauna extinction event at the end of the Ice Age in North America, they stayed. Mm-hmm. That's actually a world thing. Most of these animals that survived the, me- the megafauna extinction they survived up until modern day or, you know, humans could have wiped them out or whatever. Like we talked about with the dodo and that kind of stuff. Uh, So the weird thing is, is hyena survived way past it up to like 45,000 years ago here in the U S and then they just disappeared off the fossil record. So what's really weird about that is that nothing changed. There was nothing that are, yeah, they're definitely more related to cats than dogs, but they are their own thing. Um, What was I saying now? Oh, so they were here in the U.S. They went extinct like 45,000 years ago. These these your American spotted hyenas, they, they existed. And they, uh, I get so distracted by, I just love all everybody's questions. Uh, they existed. Their niche didn't disappear. We got a lot of chat today. Mm-hmm. Their niche didn't disappear. So what is weird is why did they disappear? Why did they go extinct? Okay. So a lot of people think that they'd never Good just question. They they just took a much more reclusive role. They mm-hmm. were always here. And now with all these hyenas coming in the, you know, the 18th century or the 19th century, all these hyenas being brought in, uh, that it boosted their population. So now we're seeing them because they're still close cousins. So that could be how both of those could be how the hyenas got here. Hyenas are comfortable in extreme heat. They're comfortable in the cold. They live in the mountains. They're scavengers. They're om- or they're, they're carnivores. They're omnivores. Uh, They eat big game. They're finally eating mice. Like hyenas will eat whatever. They're pretty similar to bears, except just more carnivorous. So that's kind of the generalization of it. So they'll eat your cat and they'll eat your dog. Okay. So (laughs) they'll eat whatever you got. So Mm -hmm. this is wild. Okay. So here's my question. Okay. So we get reports now of people being attacked and mauled to death by packs of wild dogs. What if... Let's just say, what if, what if there are actual hyena packs roaming around like late at night or sometime uh, that come out of these caves and those are what are attacking some of these people. So we just had this year in Ohio, we had a cop, the two cops, I witnessed a beast, an animal attacking and eviscerating mm-hmm. a cow. Uh, and they described it as a bear, but not quite. So they describe this, and they most people like if you guys look it up, you can find the YouTube like the, the guy calling it in and everything like that. Uh, but he's just like people think it's a dog man because the way he's describing this creature, but it's like grabbing at the belly of the cow and ripping at it with its teeth. Why the cow's still alive and fighting and stuff like that. Uh, so it's all this stuff. So they are there. I think that uh, like we'll talk about here in a minute that there are these portions of these American hyenas that are maybe responsible for some cattle mutilations, responsible for some disappearances. Like I said, once again, mm-hmm. when they are when they are by themselves or in small I mean, pairs, they are hyper-secretive animals. You will not find them. Uh, we actually have a documentary coming out about hyenas in North America in like two or three months, and I can't reveal who has it, but a biologist buddy of mine has casted hyena prints here in Ohio. Whoa. 
And how big are it, they? Can I ask like the size? They're, they're big. No way. Uh, hyenas have so different this, style of feet and stuff like that. And uh, there's big timber wolves and stuff like that when you see timber wolf tracks. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So so basically some of these hyenas could be what people people claim to see like dogmen. They think they're seeing dogmen or even hyena type dogmen. It could just be a plain old hyena then. Mm -hmm. And even getting some tracks. I mean, I had a friend who sent me a picture of a gigantic track um, the other day. I think he was in Texas, but I'm not exactly sure where he was. But a big, gigantic print. And uh, wolves were not native to where the area where he was, apparently. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were, they said, he said they were tracking a dog man. Uh, potentially, that could be like a hyena or something. And I, I think there, and I do believe in dog man, just so everybody knows yeah. that they're, they're more Me traditional. Too. Yeah, just, I do think some of these are hyenas though, especially mm -hmm. when you're not expecting to see a hyena. You don't realize how, like, people don't realize how big they are and how different. And then we talked about off air, hyenas can actually spy hop where they can stand up on their hind legs for a small <laughs> period of time and look. And you don't realize that, you know, they're 65, 70 inches long. So when they're standing up, they look kind of like people. Yeah, they look like big, scary people. And they do this in this fan and stuff like that to look over stuff. Uh, let's see. Anti-Venom. There's a god associated with hyenas. She's known as the power of the dead. Oh, been oh. oh, no, it's okay. Any pets? Oh, yeah. I, the, I, you, I accidentally hit the button before. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. If you look it up, there's pictures of these guys in the U.S. Uh, and just think about the amount yeah. of roadkill <laughs> that there's available in the U.S. for these things to eat. Oh, like yeah. There's, there's plenty of food for them to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah people like i said people's pets too and uh oh, hey yeah. angie i got angie in the chat today she said are there any pictures of them as pets in the u.s have you found yeah, come so across any pictures actually uh we stopped in oklahoma and there's like a kind of like i don't know it's not it's not the whatchamacallit uh tiger king zoo but there was like oklahoma has really <laughs> like loose zoo. and this like a like a private backyard zoo like people's pets and you can yeah. like you pay like five bucks to walk around their property and look at their animals and stuff like that. And they had hyenas. Uh, so oh yeah, they're still, they're still there. Uh, actually here in Ohio, a lady had two hyenas up until the Zanesville incident here in my home County. Uh, so yeah, there's still people that have them. Um, you just have to, I just Google type it pet hyena us. I'm sure for everybody at home, you'll find stuff. Wow. Uh, Let's see. I'm going to look, look for some pictures of that. That's really cool. I mean, I can't imagine being like a little kid and like your dad comes home with a, a hyena puppy. <laughs> it, it's right here. Thousands of them for years. Uh, I mean, wild. I never knew that. And they can be vicious. So some of these dog man, like what we consider dog man uh, predation events, you know, where these, these creatures yeah. are eating people uh, or cows or, you know, other things. So hyenas actually have a weird thing they do. Every once in a while when hyenas want to attack people, they a lot of times they crack the back of the skull and they go for the brains. They attack the back of the neck, the back of the skull, and they want to eat the brains. Uh, so there's these, like, what well, we talked about, the uh, LBL, uh, Land Between the Lakes, that, that if you want to believe, like, it was horrid. The mess, the attacks, stuff like that. And that's very hyena, like, they're messy, messy killers. Oh, wow. Trying to keep up with yes. everybody. Oh, yeah. I just saw Fred. I just saw your text. I just saw your message. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm, I just, uh, my friend Fred in Alaska just sent me some interesting things. So, yes, I just, I just saw it, Fred. Thank you. Um, very much. Yeah. Okay. The idea, Mr. E, of there mm -hmm. being, Okay, the hyenas are smart. They're stealthy. Mm -hmm. They can walk on two darn legs. Okay, they can walk on two legs, basically. Uh, that's terrifying. Okay, and to, to, to think of those being actual, like, dog men, like, where they're, like, a hybrid of, like, a hyena and a man. I mean, okay, first of all, how, how did that ever get started and made is this like a hybrid or these like ets i mean i know there's like a whole other rabbit hole to go down right and i know you're giving us like the the history of no. like the gen gen genetics and how the the demographics how they got here but like if we make this other leap into like the the hyena dog men okay so if you want to talk about like skin changers or skin walkers skin walkers like a lot yeah. of times, like in uh out west and even mexican folklore 
they have to have the pelt of that animal to be able to shift into that being or some piece of that animal. Uh, so, and then like we talked about, there's the African ones, the actual African like skin walkers that are hyena based. Uh, so we had this big import. So we don't really see these in native American legends, um, the hyena type dog, man, but they're very common now. it's like one of the top four that are seen. Like when you look, everybody you Google types of dog, man, there's like the boxes, I can't remember what number they are, but it is one of the types. So it is one of the ones that people are seeing enough. You're like, yeah, that is. So I think it can be both things that where hyenas, you don't, you're not expecting to see a big hyena. So yeah, you know, can variant too. This big, you know, I mean, hyenas. So 60 people, can we get 60? Oh, so uh, what was I saying? Oh, so I think it's a mixed thing that... Hyenas are like when they stand up and they spy hop when you freak them out and they like, let's say you surprise one and they stand up for a second okay. and look at it. They look like a person. Uh, everybody's talking about that sun bear in the zoo in China that right now that they think is a person in a suit. No, that's just how sun bears look. Sun bears are scary looking animals. So this hyena, when it stands that was up for weird. a second. Yeah. It stands up for yeah, a the, second. See, it looked like a man in a suit. Yeah, <laughs> for I real. Promise. I'm, I'm very that, sure that it was just a sun bear. They are just freaky looking. Okay. Uh, but the, the, so this thing with them standing up and they look, you know, and I think that's a lot of the dog man sightings for the hyena variant that you're just seeing uh, a hyena and, and really, really weird circumstances. But if you want to go the like the skin changer out, let's say that they did acquire when we were bringing in thousands of hyenas a year into the U.S. and people just got rid of them. Literally, like nobody knows what happened. All these hyenas that were being brought in as pets. So what do you think happened? They just okay. put them outside. Like, they just let them go. Yeah. If these skin changers wanted that, you know, that's a very powerful animal. You know, they're used to wolves and that kind of stuff. But, you know, it's very cool that it that these skin changers could be using hyenas as, you know, their, their pelts, as the shift into them. That's, that's a good point. Okay, well, this is kind of switching subjects a little tiny bit right now. Um, I I had a, a remote viewing target of the Beast of Javoudon, mm -hmm. okay, and that's in France, okay? And this was something that was going around, I believe it was from 1864 to 1867. And uh, it was a terrorizing the southern rural countryside of France. And over, I think it was 300 people were brutally killed by this creature. And there was men, women, a lot of elderly people, women, and children. Okay. And the locals referred to it as La Bête, La Bête de Gévaudan, which is like the Beast of Gévaudan. Uh, a lot of people said it was a large wolf. Uh, some think it was something more sinister. When I was remote viewing this thing, I was seeing like a hyena. Okay. I was absolutely seeing a hyena. But when I was also in that target, I was coming up with a whole lot of black magic. <laughs> I didn't know what I was looking at. And I, and I kept coming up with, it was like black magic and rituals and things like that, which could be similar to what a skinwalker is because mm -hmm. people become skinwalkers through rituals. It's not good. Rituals. It's yeah. black magic. To get to that, yeah. it's that level. I don't know. We've done episodes on skinwalker and stuff like that. It's normally an atrocity you have to commit. And by that, I mean, like, killing your best friend, killing your mom. You know, that's always, like, the last stage to become a skinwalker. It's an atrocity. You know, it's to show that to gain that power, you know, you got to do something horrible. So that's a lot of black energy just hanging out in one spot. You know, if you got to kill your mom to get this power or whatever. You know, there's there's many, many things. It's just when you become that, you know that they had to do something horrible uh, to someone they love, that, you know, to get to that level. Now, with the Beast of Javudan, it almost so – there was actually – uh, like 311 people, like you said, uh, the, the government got involved local, the King even got involved. Uh, they killed a whole bunch of wolves in an area where they were already supposed to not have wolves. There's all these theory that actually, so wolves had just gone extinct in that area. Like the last like 30 years we could do the wolf hunting because people didn't obviously, you know, p humans have never mm -hmm. liked big predators around their comp, you know, around their villages. So there's one theory that it was an animal brought in by the wolf hunters to secure a job that they went to Africa or they went to somewhere, brought mm -hmm. in that monster, released it to let it start eating people. And then they could go out and hunt it, you know, so it's job securement. Yeah. Uh, and there's all this stuff with like the skinwalkers. Right. The one of the guys, it's hard to tell with the story. 
but one of the things is that he was caught wearing a wolf pelt and the belt and all that stuff. And he was like a crazy man. And he wanted to be killed after he was caught. Uh, but the way that this animal or this thing, this thing was killing people was almost always biting the back of the neck or the back of the head and crushing it. Ooh. And that's hyena. That's very hyena. like mm -hmm. They do that in Africa. They do that to people. They do that to primates. The rare occurrences when hyenas actually attack people, it's a lot of times it's the back of the skull and they just crush. You know, Oof. if you watch videos of hyenas with big, like ma big mammal bones, and they'll just bite right through them. They have extreme jaw strength. So the back of our skull just pop like an egg. Uh, so th and then like the beast of Javadon was seen on like hind legs, like we were talking about. Hyenas can do that. But there's, yeah. Very and if you look at the back past the canines, the insiders and all that stuff, they're very they're still pointed, but they're very blunt and white as well for that cracking nature. And I believe that is a brown hyena in that picture. Oof. Wow. A very odd animal. But so the yeah. piece of I mean, that mouth. Could have been a hyena could have been a witch, could have been all of this stuff. You know, it's it's it killed a lot of people. A bunch of bunch of bunch of uh wolves were killed in this hunt. So once the king got involved, because the king lost enough people that it was affecting his tax, his, his taxes he was getting from the region. So that's the only reason the king ever cared about these peasants. I, I, it's real honor. And he sent a wolf hunter out there. Yeah. The wolf hunter killed a wolf and he was done. And it's like the wolf hunter killed a wolf and the killing of the human death never stopped. Uh, so there was one year that exactly. there was a killed every two days. Uh, and it was like there was attacking men. Uh, what was the question? Do y'all know how hyenas give birth? It's absolutely crazy. It's insane. I can tell you some really. Uh, uh, yeah. We need to keep the show. Is the show really PG? Uh, no. Go ahead. We, we can talk about it. Whatever you want to talk about, you can say so, it. It's not totally PG. <laughs> are the hardest large mammal to sex. Because and you all can okay. Google it. You all can Google it. Oh my god! The females. Government shut me down. The females have what's called a pseudo penis. And okay. They will, and it's they educational, y'all. Yeah. So it's this big. It's actually you know, it's the lips of their <laughs> genitalia shaped into the a penis, and they will actually hump and rape males in submission. But the males okay. would do it too. So both. Sexes have what looks like a penis, and both sexes hump for dominance. So okay, it's this is hard to th tell. This is interesting. And let me tell you. Okay, so I, I will give you a little bit of information about <clears throat> that target that I did, where it was like the yeah. Visa Vudan. Whatever I was remote viewing had a very high sex drive. <laughs> Okay. Well, there you go. I'd never, oh, there you go. I had never in my life remote viewed anything like that before. I was like, what in the hell is this? <laughs> no, so it, that, that would make sense. Yeah. With they were literally like, okay. and it's both sexes. So uh, I don't know if anybody's <laughs> been around rabbits. Oh, like rabbits, female rabbits will yeah. actually hunt male rabbits for dominance. They're just doing it to show who's boss if they're a little bit large or whatever. Uh, <laughs> so this what is, kind of show have I watched? Is, but wow. it's literally zoos have so, like they have to DNA test them. To see if they're boys or girls. Because they oh, can't really? tell. They look, they, they, the pseudo penis looks just like a normal penis. It looks just like it's, wow. you know, it's it's crazy. And they, they just, they're monsters in a good way. But yeah, yeah the beach of Don, <laughs> it was weird. And then, uh, so I think it was, was it Monster Quest a long time ago? Maybe it wasn't Monster Quest. I can't remember. Did an episode of the Beast of Don. And... The beast you have done, they, they brought up hyenas and whatever episode, I don't know, it, it probably wasn't Monster Quest, but whatever episode it was, brought up the beast you have done and said it could be a hyena because the winners. And now we know that's just okay. not true. There's hyenas love the cold. Like hyenas out in like zoos in Michigan and stuff like that stay outside year round. Like people okay. don't realize that the zoos, are, I'm getting so educated right now. Well, good. It's fun education, right? Now you can say that, you know, yes. This, this, Highness, both males and females have a penis. Okay, well, how about this, Mr. E? <clears throat> what about hyena dogmen? Do you think that they have the same thing going on with them? Or is it just hyenas yeah. with the, it, with the let's say it is a androgyny? Skin, so, yeah, if, if it is a skin changer, like this thing that we think that's okay. shifting, 
I think that they they do take on attributes of what animal whatever animal they're shifting into, uh, whether it's positive or negative. Only on Jessica's show. Yeah, okay. there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, of course we. We, we like to think outside the box. Talk, we talk outside the box, okay, everybody? Y'all know that about my show. We uh, we, we really think critically about stuff <laughs> over here at the Crypto oh, yeah. <laughs> I, just, Hyenas are hyper-specialized Ice Age mammals that survived into modern day. Uh, ancient literature mentions that hyenas magically change sex. Yeah, so, I mean, imagine if uh, if you were an ancient person and you watched a hyena hump another hyena and what you thought was the male gives birth. You know, it's, it's just what, you know, it's very hard to explain, especially when every, like, uh, I think it was the 1800s when all the European settlers were killing all the hyenas to send back to zoos. They killed so many trying to find a female. And they're like, there's no females of the species. We don't know where the females are because they, everything, everyone they killed had a penis. So they kept looking, kept oh looking, kept looking, could not find one. And then now we know that it's, because literally, uh, I'm I'm telling you guys, if you don't believe me, look it up. It is insane. Uh, people yeah. have not believed me about that before. That literally, it's like, it's a whole instrument. It's, oh, my gosh. Well, y'all look that up on your own time, okay? Yeah. We're not pulling up pictures today. <laughs> We're not pulling up pictures. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's very interesting, Mr. E. I do appreciate that. Appreciate yeah. you educating us on that. Um. Yeah. I mean, where I get we're, weird. Um, well, defense mechanisms, I guess, right? And uh, just okay. So these things are not only terrifying to look at. You don't want to be attacked by one. You can't tell if they're male or female. Um, and uh, and pretty much the females are dominant over all. Are they, now? Are they always dominant over the men, or do they just always. like to? So that's kind, of, okay. like, that's kind of a misnomer thing, you know. Uh, it's both males and females can be dominant. Generally, though, uh, but a lot of times the males are bigger, and they are the okay. whoever's the biggest one in the pack is generally the most dominant. So if the largest member happens to be a female, it'll be a female. If it happens to be a male, it'll be a male. But that's a fight, you know. They are constantly. Uh, so hyenas are very good about when they're hunting and doing all this stuff about not picking fights with each other like they're very good at working together and like i don't know if anybody's ever seen like that group of lions uh killing yeah we talked about it so they're not they're a really ancient order they stepped off of the same lineage that both felines and canines stepped off of and weasels somebody said earlier uh but they're their own thing they're their own group of animals um now what were they saying oh so that but in downtime they will pick fights with each other to assert dominance are constantly shifting the ring of dominance. Uh, so yeah, wow. hyenas look very violent, but you know, they're, they're very smart animals. And like we've said that they can end up, they can survive in any environment. They used to have a global range. So one of these animals that had a global range, they were in, all over the Northern hemisphere and some of the Southern hemisphere. Uh, as far as we know, they never made it to South America, but they were in Asia. They okay. were in Russia. They were in Europe. I mean, literally the Euro Asian, uh, species just went extinct within the last, I believe, four or five hundred years. Uh, there's still some. Oh, wow. What was it? I think it was like a six hundred year old kind of like like a book with paintings and stuff in it, like some kid was doing or whatever. And they were she had paintings of hyenas, so the hyenas were still around the countryside where this little girl was, and they were seeing them regularly oh, wow. enough that they were still there. So these hyenas, just like hyenas, are have always butted up against humans. They've been very good about it as far as the big mammals that we're worried about. You know, we wiped out the big cats in North America. A lot of people don't realize jaguars were native all over North America. And there's argument about this. So whenever you hear a biologist, and I, I was a biologist. So whenever you hear a biologist talk about ranges, keep in mind, historic ranges are very personalized. As in that I could have a very different, like from evidence and stuff like that, where I think their jaguars range and, you know, it's a, if I can believe a man with two faces, I can believe that. Oh, okay. I was like, Oh, that, that's, that's, that's in reference to the, to the Kishi that we talked about last week. Uh, oh, yeah. the, the man with the hyena on the back of his head yeah. out of Africa. Yeah. So that's, with that, that's it's really about. similar to the U S skinwalkers sick having to wear yes. that. Belt. 
having to put that yeah. thing on to become that thing. Uh, and in Europe, the the bear shifters, if you would steal the bear fur from them, they couldn't turn back into bears. So it's another one of these skin changers from another part of the world that people would literally go out and try to steal these bear shifters. They would start to steal their pelts and take their power away from them. Wow. But now what am I saying about hyenas? So this is worldwide. I mean, this this happens yeah. everywhere. And it's, it's everywhere. basically like kind of black magic kind of stuff when it comes yeah. to the skinwalkers and yes. the shapeshifters. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's here's my question. If Since I live in near the Appalachian Mountains, I'm here in Georgia. I do a lot of my, re pretty much all of my Bigfoot research is in the Appalachian Mountains. Okay. And so if I were to encounter a hyena and i'm not talking about a hyena dog man right now i'm talking about just a regular oh hyena what what do you recommend i do i mean don't I panic. carry a gun for protection but what what yeah don't panic don't okay panic. Don't that's run. that's easy to say <laughs> i mean i know it's i've been around black bear i've been around elk and i've never been around any uh, the big i've been really close to a mountain lion uh but it's the easiest the best thing you can ever do is not run and not turn your back because once you turn your back and once you run, you've become prey. Until oh, they get point, the back of your head, right? Once you and it's any it's any of the big carnivores uh, that once once your eyes are off them and you're moving away, you have accepted the prey role. Until that point, you're both predators. Now in nature, it's very mm -hmm. it's very uncommon for two predators to really pick a fight with each other unless the one's really hungry or territorial encroachment stuff like that. Because it's not beneficial to either of them. That they just want to, you know, they want to back off each other. So hyenas are not dumb animals like we already talked about. So if you're looking at them and you're presenting that you're big, you're not really worth it. You've already, they don't have the cover of surprise and just kind of start backing away. Like, have you seen the guys with mountain lions and videos of them just backing away slowly with your eyes on the animal? Yeah. I guarantee the hyena is probably going to go the other way. They're just not wanting to fight, especially a singular hyena. You know, it's different when there's 50 of them. Uh, but when it's just one or two oh, hyenas... Yeah. So like uh, Penny here says, there's four species of hyena left. There's act so it's two species and their subspecies, which is four species. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a split thing. Uh, but yeah, so there's basically two spotted hyena variants left and two brown hyena variants left. I did subspecies kind of stuff for a while. But yeah, so that's what I would say. And if it's a dog man hyena, uh, prey. So yeah, they're shoot yeah. it, <laughs> shoot it. Yeah, yeah. They, like I said earlier, yeah. they're in their own family. Group. I don't know. I mean. They're not cats or yeah. Yes. It, oh, it it's just um it's very scary. But I hear about okay, so we hear about the hyena type dogmen in the land between the lakes area. Okay. Uh -huh. And that is what I when I was remote viewing that family getting attacked, I did see two. Um what looked like the only way I could describe it were like hyenas, but they were like hyena men, okay, that were yeah. attacking that family. And so, and I've heard since then that there have been reports of hyena type dogmen in the land between the lakes area. Um, now, are they a genetic experiment from the military? I mean, they do have those things, you know, like make, making super 100%. soldiers and stuff like that. So, like uh, Japan two years ago. Uh, so, once we, we all know, I'm pretty sure we all here agree that the the any world government is lying to you about whatever i mean i don't care you just pick it they're lying to you it doesn't matter no if it's, way yeah i know just doesn't kidding. matter if it's the budget <laughs> or aliens or whatever but japan <laughs> two years ago or three years ago now uh publicly reversed the world the, the un law about genetic hybrids with humans they publicly mm. renounced it so that means that they're okay. publicly moving. They're allowing not only their their uh, private sector, their government sector, to mess with human animal hybrids. They're allowing their 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 public sector, as in the private, you know, business. Business can now make in Japan can make genetic human hybrids. Uh, and they've probably been doing this forever. I mean, in World War II, they were trying to make you know monkey men, and they were trying to make all this stuff. Well, hi, Dave. Hey, Dave Scott. That's Dave Scott, y'all. Thank you, Dave Scott from Space Out Radio for that super chat. <laughs> so sweet of you. Everybody go check out Space Out Radio tonight, please, at midnight Eastern. That's Dave Scott show. I'm a weekend host there. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> so uh what was I saying? I'm bad with this part. Sorry. Hey, Jap really Jap Japan. It oh, was Japan. They renounced, they renounced the genetic hybridization. 
Uh, so that means that they publicly admitted that they're doing this. They're allowing not only their own government to do this, private industry to do this. Uh, and we've probably been doing it forever. Like in World War II, uh, I believe it was Russia was doing the monkey men with both orangutans and chimpanzees and gorillas. But they trying to make it the old fashioned way, though, which is it's it's all gross, but it was really gross the way they were trying to do it. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Shall I ask? I'm scared to ask. <laughs> the old fashioned way of making a hybrid. Oh, okay. I'm not sure how that works, but I don't know. Is that is that just like the just hyena? Put, extra you put marks? a female human and a oh. male chimpanzee in a room. Oh God. Okay. That's all you have to say. Way. That's all you have to say. <laughs> yeah, That's they tried to. Fun. Yeah. So they tried it the old way Ew. for a long time and could never get anything to stick. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then they tried. So Jeez. genetic knowledge. But uh, I really, I, it's so weird around these bases that like all these government bases and these secret places and all this stuff, these quote unquote secret places that how many of these, what I would call Bigfoot like animal or Bigfoot like things that aren't Bigfoot in my opinion, uh, these hyena, these dog man, like all these things are just monsters or mashups. Like the, the actual, when people say that they've seen these hyena men with like hands and stuff like that, they look messed up. Yeah, Like they don't look yeah. like they're in the best of shape. Which would, you know, if there's actually genetic hybrids, you know, you get a lot of problems. Uh, even when we make hybrids and really close, like if we do it the natural way, like uh, I have a bunch of birds. So I cross bird species. Sometimes you get genetic hiccups and they just come out all messed up. So now you're talking about animals that are right. not close related, hyenas and people. You know, we are both have a lot of DNA that's shared, but we are very, very distantly related. So trying to make that stuff mash up is very difficult and you get a lot of messing messiness but i do yeah, think there's something with imagine. that these monsters around these government bases or around these things are the land between the lakes where they're uh so a lot of times hybrids are uh it's called hybrid vigor is what we have the actual term for it and they'll get bigger and they get a lot more aggressive than either species Ooh. so like ligers so ligers are a natural hybrid you know, they're three times the size of a tiger, you know, the biggest natural big cat left on the planet. Uh, but they're generally a lot more aggressive. Uh, you know, trainers still work yeah. for ligers and stuff like that to get them to where they're, but they're still big cat. Uh, but so if this is something, amoeba man, one track mine cryptid. <laughs> uh, the honey dog man expect to open doors for a date. Is what? <laughs> Well, it depends on what, what kind of hands they have. Oh, Come I on get with it. it. Depends on what kind of hands they have. Okay, yeah. It's supposed to open I'm doors. I'm slow, guys. I'm sorry. I, I would not go on a date with a hyena dog, man. It's okay. Well, I'm really behind on the comments too. I get I get behind a little bit. Um, well, you guys got a lot of comments. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I do. Uh, they fly through too. Like I have a hard time keeping up. So sometimes you shout think out there's to none all my like, live chat today. There's like none for a couple minutes, and then there's like seven of seven of them. I know. And Fred, I saw your comment. I'll holler at you. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, yeah. So the, the genetic experiment thing, I mean, hyenas are very powerful, omnivoristic animal. Their stomach acid is extreme. Uh, so most people yeah. don't realize that they actually eat big chunks of bone on purpose and they can digest it. Uh, them and some buzzard Whoa. species on the planet are the, have some, sorry, some of the, them and some buzzard species have some of the strong stomach acid on the planet. Uh, because they'll just eat whole big chunks of bone and they will digest it. Like they ain't they ain't pooping out a big chunk of bone. I'm sure it happens, but they can wow. digest bone pretty easily. Uh, but yeah, I've so I've not heard of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at look up videos and them crunching on like big cow bones and zoos and stuff like that, they're swallowing those chunks. So dogs, for example, will chew up bones, but most of the time they're going for the marrow inside the bones. Hyenas are just eating it oh, all. Oh, yeah, the good stuff. They like bones, like yeah. they don't care. Uh, okay. Well, can I tell yeah. you what the hyena dogmen were going for? Yes. I can, I can, we can talk about that. Uh, because yes. when, when I was, uh, did that target and I was seeing like, um, hyena type dogmen, okay, they were actually not even going to eat. I mean, they were eating, they did eat upon at least one of those people there. They did eat their bodies, okay, but it, they were going for the inside. It was more like the organs. Yeah. And it was the blood. Okay, it was the blood. They were they were like actually kind of trying to scare them first to get that adrenalized Adrenal, blood. Yeah, yeah. So, so that 
to me personally points more towards the spiritual or the demonic, you know, yeah. or cause like if you, now the land between lakes thing, like the little girl was supposedly ripped in half and decorated around a tree, like a Christmas, you know, like just horrible. The whole thing was horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other land between the lakes encounters have all been terrifying, horrible. The one with the cop, the, the college kids. Yes. Uh, so it's definitely this fear factor thing. And carnivores go for organs. So a lot of people may not realize this. Meat is not nutritious in nature unless you cook it. So meat, actually, okay. almost all the calories, the muscle fibers are way too dense for most mammals to digest. That's why they go for the organs. Uh, it's much more easily digestible calories. Uh, so that's why you see, well, let's see, I had seen a video a while back of Jap Japan or China that had imp implanted brain cells into monkey embryos and allowed them to grow for long before stopping the experiment. Don't know how true. Oh, no, they do that kind of stuff all the time. They actually have there's a monkey they have a brain box hooked up to. They actually open the skull of this monkey, uh, yeah. plug the computer chip into it, and they can control the monkey using some human tissues. Oh, my God. And people now are volunteering to get brain chips. Humans don't are. Do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I say don't do it. I would or, never do that. Yeah. it's Don't let them put stuff in your body. But do what you, you want. Are. Everybody has free will. Okay. Yeah. But you won't have free will if you do that. <laughs> No, literally, so they, they, they were doing that like 10 years ago, walking this monkey around like it yeah. couldn't control itself anymore. Uh, oh, God, it's got that's horrible. The helmet on. Uh, more talk oh, the demonic that's angle. Sad. Like, definitely, like yeah. this blood stuff with the adrenochrome and everything like that. You know, it speaks of these alien like things that we have, uh, and where they want to target this blood, this adrenalized blood, which just to me just screams mm -hmm. demonic. I, you know, I don't know everybody's opinions demonic. and everything like that, but it's just, to me, it's very demonic uh, to where it's just, uh, it's a show. It's just to look as scary as possible. And hyenas look very scary. I love hyenas, but they are a very intimidating looking animal. You know, wolves kind of yes. almost look friendly because they look like dogs. You know, we have a household pets, you know, yeah. the dogs and wolves. Are, so a lot of people, like I've seen people in, North, in the UP of Michigan walk up to wild wolves they and their dogs, and it's just like, don't do it. Hyenas don't. Like, hyenas look very scary. So if you want to go for that angle to get the most adrenochrome, you know, as you're being, your family's being ripped apart, yeah. and you look like this thing. Yeah. So I don't, very so demonic. I don't, you, you've uh, witnessed, are you, I don't know the right words, I'm sorry. Well, remote you, viewed. Remote yeah. viewed, thank you. But <laughs> the coroner's report. witnessing in a way. Yeah. The coroner's report, uh, talked about how the dad had to be killed by an axe. And he, but the weird thing was, is he could never find any metal shavings. And then we're talking micro metals. We're talking this stuff mm -hmm. like, like always comes off of axes. Uh, so if anybody's killed with a blade, I don't care how nice your blade is or whatever, it's leaving behind traces of whatever metal it is made of. So this dad, the only reason he said it was hacked by an axe because these big, deep slash marks into his back, I mean, cutting through his ribs. And he's like, oh, you had to swing it. Like, you had to swing an axe to get that much leverage and force or, you know, really big, wow. big claw. So, yeah, it could be that whole thing of just putting on this really scary face to really get us yeah. terrified. Yeah. And it would work for me. And, yeah, uh, Brown Dwarf. Yeah, we yeah talked me about, too. You know, <laughs> yeah. In Africa, there's hyena men. Uh, and then there's bear like men in, in, in Europe and stuff like that. Or there was, you know, we may have, they, they may be hiding better now. Yeah. Oh, and okay. So we have like the were hyenas too. Not, not to get off, go off subject, what we're talking about here, but we do have like were hyenas. I think I have a few pictures um, of, and, and the, what we talked about last week with the Kishi. Okay. And um, the Kishi is this, a man with a hyena on the back of his head and it usually hides in his dreadlocks. Okay. And, um, and it, it turns its head like 180, right? Hold on. Let's see if I can get this picture to come up. Well, it turns its head like 180 and it ends up killing the one. It only goes after women, by the way. And, uh, and it will, it will take, take the woman and, and, um, kill her after, you know, I guess usually it's after they have a child together. Uh, a lot of times yeah. it'll wait and, and do that but there's a hyena it's it's a like a human hyena hybrid kind of but it's demonic they consider that to be demonic mr e so a lot I, of the stuff is too. considered demonic yeah i would I, oh yeah yeah if you have an animal very demonic in your head and you're forcing women yeah. to kill people before you kill them 
I, and your head I'm spins around demonic. like I'm gonna go like, demonic. Yeah, it's like the exorcist up in there, y'all. With with uh in, with the hyena on the forest. other side. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I'm smiling. This is funny. I mean, it's kind of funny, but it's not funny because it's like, it's terrifying. If this stuff is real, I mean, and I, I believe that they don't, these stories don't come out of nowhere. Right. You know what I mean? So, I don't care how odd the folklore is. Uh, there's always truth to it. So we we're talking at yeah. Swankapalooza about Lumberland creatures and everybody knows, like, I'm sure all your listeners know, like the Lumberland ones are fun and goofy things. Like, you know, the, the squonk is this thing that cries itself into a puddle. Almost all of those creatures, though, are to tell stories or lessons about natural events or to teach you, uh, like, lessons of, like, don't, like, it, there's all kinds of weird ones. So the squonk was a natural phenomena of basically they'd come out into the woods and they'd find these big puddles of what looks like water with bubbles in it. And, and then they disappear once the sun came out. And what it happens is actually beetles. Okay. It's a way beetles breed when they 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 these big breeding groups of these little bugs create this big puddle of liquid with a bunch of bubbles in it, and they, they made a creature to explain this natural phenomena. So I don't care. I guess that's what I was getting at. Is I don't care how weird the folklore is. There is always truth into that folklore. During the war, they saw uh, sewed a dog head onto another uh, another whole dog, and it survived a while. Since that, imagine what they could do. Yeah, and they've uh, there was actually uh, probably the same vein as those experiments, JoJo, where they cut the heads off of dogs and just kept them alive for a while. Uh, the dog would salivate Ew. when it wanted, like with a treat, like when they showed the dog a treat. This head of a dog, they had a, like, a heart pump and a lung pump for it. Uh, yeah, so it and that was World War II, like you said. Uh, so imagine what they're doing today. Yeah, you know, hundred years later, people that was a long time ago. World War II is almost a hundred years ago. That's I'm right. reading. Sorry. Wow. Many people don't even know. It's okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to decide which comments to pull up too. We got some good ones. <laughs> we got some really good like, ones. Yeah. So, like Penny said about how many uh, exotic animals live in North America. Florida is like a hot spot. Like Florida has more exotics now than almost native species. It's insane. And Florida has a lot of native species. We're talking like a thousand species of fish live in Florida right now. Uh, but we did an episode yeah. called Monsters in the Marsh, where uh, which I know you want to talk about dinosaurs here in a minute, so I'll save that. But Monsters in the Marsh. Oh, yeah, for sure. I just, I'm just telling okay. you that so I remember. But yeah, so the hyenas. Did I forget anything about hyenas you want to talk about? I mean, I, I think we've covered a lot of it. I mean, we've even gotten into like the hyena dogmen that have been spotted. And I know like, Listen, we're at the hour mark, so I figured let's let's okay. So we pretty much covered that. Let's talk about a couple of other interesting cryptids that are in the Appalachians before we go. Okay. You did bring up the dinosaurs, and I have gotten reports of velociraptors in Georgia, yeah, particularly the Appalachian Mountains. Is that something that you're familiar with? So yeah, there's like the so there's a Cambridge dragon, which is uh, Tennessee or yeah, Cambridge, Tennessee, uh, and then there's a Georgia raptor. The Georgia Raptor, everybody, the famous big sighting of the Georgia Raptor was a grandson and a grandpa out squirrel hunting or turkey hunting. I can't remember now. And they seen what would be a like a five foot tall, very velociraptor like animal running through the woods. And that's it. They just seen it. Uh, I believe the, the kid didn't even know what it really was when he went online and he started talking in a forum. Uh, but that same year is there was a uh, a Girl Scout camp about 50 miles away that had a turkey-sized animal attacking and killing a sheep on the property. And a bunch of the Girl Scouts and a couple of camp counselors seen this turkey-sized dinosaur-like animal attacking and killing or trying to kill a sheep. Uh, so it's popped up. like And then, like, so the Cumberland Dragon, Cumberland, Cumberland, Tennessee, or Cumberland, yeah, not whatever I said. Uh, the Cumberland Dragon. Is it Tennessee? Was, it, yeah, I believe so. It's another okay. one where it was seen by a... Uh, uh, what was it? Was it a Civil War? I think it was a Civil War army. Seeing this dragon-like creature, they described it as being about being about five foot tall, having a very large plume of feathers off the top of its head like a cockatoo, but being very reptilian with a big, wide mouth full of teeth. Uh, so very dinosaur-like description mm -hmm. of that. Uh, so dinosaurs have popped up all over, and we talked about pterosaurs too. The wow. U.S. is full of pterosaurs. Not only the U.S., the world has been seeing pterosaurs 
I personally, so here's my thing is that I believe eyewitnesses. I believe when people say they've seen a pterosaur, they probably did. Uh, or seen something they believe is a pterosaur. Like, yeah, uh, most, like, mm -hmm. it's probably Kentucky then, Penny. I'm probably wrong. I don't have the notes in front of me. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so these pterosaurs. Some of them are gigantic. So Quetzalcoatlus was the largest flying animal to ever exist. And it was about 42 foot wingspan and about 21 feet tall walking around the ground. So it was about the same height as a giraffe with the wingspan of a small plane. And that was the largest. Jeez. And then there's like Hexel, oh Hexel Quadalai, which is the next big. There's a bunch of big pterosaurs that were flying around. Uh, so all these all these big pterosaurs. Here's my thing is I don't think that at least the big pterosaurs and these big dinosaurs, uh, like the Partridge Creek Beast. We talked about that one off air. The, this is the 1800s. This yes. creature uh, was seen in the Yukon. Uh, these guys were uh, moose hunting, and everybody knows moose are very, very big, big animals. So these guys were moose hunting, and the herd of moose they were stalking, uh, they heard a commotion, they came out, and there was blood everywhere, and they came out, and the moose was gone, the dead moose, whatever. So normally if a bear kills a moose, which is very, very hard to see, like a very hard thing for a bear to do, uh, there would be drag marks and stuff. There was no drag marks. The, just, the carcass was gone. So they followed the tracks, followed the tracks, followed this blood, Eventually, they came out, and keep in mind, this is the 1800s. They see a what is basically a feathered, a very, very thickly feathered T-Rex. And what we'd consider nowadays oh. is called a Utyrannus, which is the north, you know, it's called the polar T-Rex, smaller but fully feathered. This is the 1800s before we even knew dinosaurs look like dinosaurs, whether they look like big lizards, and we didn't know they had feathers. So they're seeing this fully feathered. They just almost described it as a, a very beautiful duck. Like, but very dinosaur like dimensions when they drew it. Ferocious duck uh, with yeah, sharp teeth. It, yeah. And it's carrying the moose in its mouth. The moose isn't dragging. And then it goes into a cave and it was seen several other times. So okay. I am one that believes that these creatures are coming in out of, like, whether it's time slips or whatever. You got to, like, these guys had amazing senses of smell. So let's say portals actually leak the scent of smell from the other side. So now this big predator is smelling food. You know, it's a herd of moose on the other side of this. I can eat a moose. I don't know what a moose is, but it smells good. Yeah. Walks through, gets a moose, and walks back home. You know, it's using its side of smell. We can't, most of the time, we, we can't see the portals. Uh, and that's maybe where it's going because the tracks would disappear, and it was seen several times. And then the pterosaurs, they could be doing the same thing. They'd pop it in and out. I could see very, wow. like, yeah. smaller size. Like, we're talking, like, six, seven-foot pterosaurs living and not being found. But we're talking, like, the ones in Texas, the ones out west where they're talking these guys are 30-foot wingspans. You know, that's a lot harder for me to believe that there's a living population of them fully yeah. here. Maybe pop it in and out. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, okay, so they're putting out movies like Jurassic Park, okay? And it seems like with a lot of the movies, they're kind of given a soft disclosure as to what could mm -hmm. be going on somewhere. Could there possibly be an island somewhere? Let's just say an island, okay? For all intents and purposes okay there's an island where they are doing all sorts of experimentation on reviving dinosaurs uh some sort of you know i mean t-rexes and all that stuff is there a place where they're actually doing these experiments and some of these dinosaurs have escaped so uh now there's a couple of years ago there's a story that china had discovered an island of dinosaurs and is keeping it under lock and key that it was just existing out there. Uh, now, here's the problem. We talked about it off air, but we have some dinosaur DNA. And stuff like pterosaurs are not dinosaurs. They are their own group. They are what was considered flying reptiles. Uh, but they're very, very distantly related to any reptile today. So the big problem is we have mummified dinosaurs. Uh, like, um, like, I think believe we have a mummified uh, Camelosaurus, which is a, a smaller sauropod. Uh, so we have DNA fragments from these guys. We can clone them. The big problem is, is the embryos. So with mammals and birds and reptiles, when we clone them, we need a close enough species to house the growing embryo. So the problem oh. with dinosaurs is that these birds that are left are very, very, very distantly related to dinosaurs. They are dinosaurs in the sense that they, their lineage is continued on from dinosaurs into modern day birds but they've taken a step on becoming their own thing, like any other animal. When 
their group steps off. So we have big enough eggs. You know, we have ostriches, we have cassowaries, we have, you know, we have big egg laying birds. The real problem is, is if the host genetic material will recognize and accept the new DNA, the DNA of the new embryo and not attack it and kill it. So that's another big thing of why we need these creatures that have close enough DNA is basically eggs are like a womb. You know, the egg itself is considered a, it's almost a separate living thing for a while. You know, its whole job is like to, it's a, what our womb do. It just happens to not be in our body. So if it doesn't recognize that DNA as being close enough, and humans have this problem with it sometimes in a pregnancy, that the baby's DNA will get recognized as a parasite, and the host, well, the mom, the, her body will actually start attacking the baby. Now, that's yeah. the human human. Now, we're talking these things that are very ancient to modern-day birds. Uh, so that's the big problem with that. Now, pterosaurs are a whole nother thing. We don't have them anymore. We don't have their groups. Like, they're gone as far as the... the not supposed the, to. Yeah, the commercial, as in far as having eggs to put these guys in, because we know they laid eggs. Uh, we have pterosaur eggs. And then some, you know, some reptiles, or not from some dinosaurs, there's signs that they may have given birth, and even, like, the big marine reptiles gave live birth. So there's all this, th uh, all this stuff with that. That's my big problem with the cloning aspect of dinosaurs, is that Jurassic Park made it look a little yeah. easier. And it is, it, we can make yeah. genes. Uh, so like the de-extinction events that we're doing with mammoths, trilocines, and dodo birds, those animals still have close, close related relatives that we can use their wombs and their eggs. So the uh, mammoth is really okay. close related to the, uh, your, the Asian elephant. So you can plug, a, you can basically take an embryo, clone a mammoth, make an embryo, and plug it into a, oh, an Asian elephant, and they'll pop out a mammoth. So the mother is not affecting the DNA. Whoa. The mother is just growing it. Uh, Trilocines have a cousin I keep forgetting the name of. They have a video game about it. Bandicoots. Bandicoots. Thank you. Crash Bandicoot. That's why I need Jay. Uh, and then <laughs> dodo birds, uh, the giant crowned pigeons are related to them and they lay a big egg. So dodo birds. So those are the three animals. Uh, Colossus, which is a company is de-extincting. Uh, and so, yeah, I guess that's my spiel about eggs and dinosaurs. So wow. I think it would be very hard to clone a dinosaur, not for the DNA aspect for finding a, a, a egg suitable enough to accept it. I think the trilocene is out there as well as the mango. I, yeah, I a hundred percent believe trilocenes are still around. There's some really good photo evidence of them. They're still getting really good pictures of these guys. Uh, Melodon, I don't think so. And you'll have to wait on that one. I can't explain that one because that comes out in like two weeks. Oh, but, your yeah. special show that you're going to be putting out? Uh, there's a Megalodon one coming out. It's oh, like, a Megalodon uh, one. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. August. Oh, well, I have to stay tuned for that one. This is awesome. <laughs> Man, this... This has been a, a fantastic conversation today. Seriously. Uh, you are so knowledgeable, Mr. E. Oh my gosh. Thanks. Um, hopefully I didn't talk too yeah. much. No, what, what I really love about it, you know, is on my, my Bigfoot field research team, we, we actually have a wildlife biologist. I mean, we have a, a little bit of everything on my team and, uh, and it, and it takes someone with that kind of knowledge like you have, okay. To really bring it all in, you know, when we're out there doing our research, because yeah, we're out there experiencing stuff. We're trying to figure out like what's coming through portals, but we need, if it's portals, if it's, you know, supernatural or is it flesh and bone and what are those noises and what is this plant and is the vegetation, right? Could it survive out here? All that kind of stuff. A person with your knowledge that has like that biology background, okay, is just so important to bring a practical approach to what we're experiencing out there and, uh, and, and to just what we're trying to figure out in this world. So thank you so much for coming on today and, uh, and sharing your knowledge it. with me and my audience. Yeah, oh. this is awesome. You know more about hyenas than just about anybody I've ever met. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an info eater. Uh, you are. I, I do think like Pac-Man. I got to thank our listener, Sean. I'm sure he'll listen to this. Uh, but it, w it wasn't something that ever crossed my mind until he sent me a little email saying, hey, I seen a hyena in Lexington. Here's my story. And we did a whole episode on it. So, oh, yeah, wow. thank you for having me. Uh, oh, yeah, thank you for putting that up there. I just seen somebody. Uh, oh, gosh, no. Chiro Sounds, is that how you say that? Oh, yeah. We... we uh chiro yes chiro sounds that's jane thank you so much jane yeah you're you're
links have been posted throughout the whole show um, well, thanks, uh, for your YouTube channel. And uh, where, where else can people find you other than your all YouTube channel? You have, uh, you're all over Apple, Spotify. Yep. All that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Instagram, Facebook. We do live shows on both of those. Uh, we do conferences. We have all that fun. Uh, and I, if everybody can go, hopefully that'll be the last Wi-Fi cut out. Uh, if everybody goes to our YouTube page, we have the premiere of our first documentary. It's it's listener funded, so we're very excited for it. It's just been a really fun thing to do. Uh, it's like a premiere page. If you can just like that premiere page and comment, I would greatly appreciate it because it boosts it for the algorithm. But yeah, no, thank you for having me. And I know your episode hasn't officially came out on our show yet, but we, it, and we recorded it first. That's the problem is we did it during a season break, but it comes out very soon. Thank you. Yes. And I've already had you, you've on, you've been on live for two shows in the past week with me. So, or the past week and a half or so. So yeah, uh, I, I hope to have you back on again and to do more work with you. Like, I think that it's, uh, I think that you're amazing. And uh, we're going to bring uh, Jay on too at some point. Okay. Yes. And, uh, and, and have Jay out because yes, yes. We'll definitely bring him back on too. So yeah, I want to thank everybody for the super chats today and the super stickers and, um, Oh, wait, let me check one more time. Okay, yes. Thank everybody for all your support. All my moderators for being here today. My moderators were kicking butt today in my chat and leaving all these links. I, I so appreciate you guys so much. And uh, please go, let me uh, pull this up on the screen before we go. I have, um, I know that there's a link in the the comments today in the live chat, but I know not everybody's watching on live chat today or wherever you're watching this. It could be way down the road, uh, but yeah, please um, go to Cryptos of the Corn podcast. Uh, that's on YouTube and on all your platforming, streaming platforms. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> all, of your, all the podcasting platforms. Okay. And uh, go subscribe. Go give him a five-star rating, please. Okay. Thank you. I and appreciate uh, it. Yes, absolutely. Okay, y'all. Well, everybody, please uh, join me again tomorrow night. I'm going to have a remote viewing show 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow night here at the Cryptid Hunters. And then I'll be back this weekend on Spaced Out Radio. All right. When when is your next event coming up, Mr. E? What's going on this with weekend. you? Where can people so, see you? Uh, August. Uh, let me pull it. I, I got to click. Uh, or no, August 4th and 5th. We're at the Hocking Hills Bigfoot Festival. Uh, we're in a little special vendors area. And then our next speaking event is in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, the August 26th. We're speaking about Lumberland folklore. Uh, so, yeah, we have a lot of fun. If you guys come out to a conference and say yes, tell us you heard about us on here. Uh, come have a drink with us. We always have something afterwards set up <laughs> to where we go out and like we do like a hike or we do a hangout or whatever. And normally I get very drunk. It's kind of. Oh, my uh, gosh. It's that moonshine, point. huh? Yeah. yeah, everybody brings me a bunch and it's just fun. Oh, yeah. So thank you. That's awesome. I wish I could be there for that. I'm going to have to meet up with you uh, and Jay at some point and uh, we'll, oh, yeah. we'll, we'll cross paths at one of these conferences one day for sure yeah. and go camping. And if you're ever in Georgia, holler at me and we'll um, we'll take you Bigfoot. OK, it sounds Out great here in my, my neck of the woods. All right. Awesome, Mr. E. You're the best. Everybody, y'all have a wonderful day. Thank y'all so much for joining us. I will see you guys tomorrow night. Bye. Bye.